Hello folks, here we are, it's the next day. And um, I've had these bowls, these GP bowls, in the, in the uh, studio here um, overnight. They've dried somewhat, but I want to get them, uh, I just want to get them finished off quickly. So I'm just taking the opportunity well, we have a bit of sun because I think tomorrow we've got rain, I'm not sure. So I'm just, let me just zoom in for you there. I know many of you are probably thinking, oh God, we've seen this a million times. But I just move it. Something like that. Yeah, I know you've seen it a lot. I'm sorry, I can't help it, you know, it's what I'm doing. You know, I have to get on with my own life as well as <laughs> making video clips. But the video clips, see, just really a spin-off of what I'm doing anyway, so... You probably think, well, all he does is make, make those GP balls. And then you probably say to yourself, well, what does GP stand for anyway? <laughs> well, it stands for general purpose bowl. So I'm, all I'm doing is, I'm, while the, before, before they get dry on the rim, making sure they're round, turning them upside down, and with a sponge in one hand, and with my fingers literally finishing them like this. You see how quick it is? They're quick to throw, quick to finish. That's what we want. We've got to bang these out, get them out there. Because these are survival pots. Remember what I said? Survival! We are survivors! Anyway, If you wet your, like I'm doing with the sponge, you wet your fingers, you make it happen very quickly. Beautiful, beautiful autumn day we're having here. But I think there's a big storm coming across from Chicago, Ohio, Coming this way, I suppose. Now speed is one thing, but as well as speed, there's no point in just being quick for the sake of being quick if what you're doing is bad, is poor quality, and it, it doesn't and it doesn't look good after you've done it, and you know. It's that then just becomes poor craftsmanship and that's not, not what we're about. We're trying to make them well but make them fast. So I've done that. Um, I've got my seal here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal them all. Don't press your seal in too hard, otherwise it can come come through on the other side, can't it? And, and leave a leave a, a mark. Especially if they're a bit soft on the bottoms, like these are a little bit a little bit soft on the bottoms. It's quite easy, you see, to seal them once they're face down, like I'm doing. Um, it's quite quick and easy. Rather than trying to hold them in your hand and seal them. A 
There was one here I saw which I thought needed a little extra. In fact, that one I'm going to put onto the wheel and just skim it with my, my trim tool. I'm not 100% happy with it, and that one as well. Other than that, I think they're done. So, um, yeah, that's just a, a quick little quick little something I had to do, so this would be like a, a, a quick clip. You know. um, I've got to go on now to, to, to make, let me just sit down here, to make some more, some more pots. Um, so I'm thinking to myself, well, what am I going to make? I think probably the next thing I'm going to make is, because I told you what I wanted to do is build up some stock of, of good, easily saleable bread and butter pots because now's the, now's the season perhaps with the, with the um, holidays coming up that we, we have some pots to sell and I'm going to be setting these up in, in a display area or a display room here in the main house downstairs there in that big long house remember I showed you on the, on the clip downstairs there so I want to have some nice pots so get some people to come down here and have a look in the showroom. Um, for your interest I'm going to be running a couple of a couple of workshops here in this studio um, 27th and 28th of November and the I believe it's the 11th and 12th of December. So if anybody is interested in, um, in joining, joining me here in the studio for some hands-on, uh, if there's anything I can help you with, you know, we, we can do some practicing and repeating and I'll try and, if I can, show you, show you and help you uh, if there's anybody out there who's, who's interested in that. If you, if you are interested, if you, if you can write to me at simon.leach6 at gmail.com simon.leach6 at gmail.com and I will send you more information about that, um, a bit of a breakdown of, of, the, of the day. It will be two, the two days and um, what else? Um, yeah, and basically, you know, the time we start and finish and method of payment, etc. Okay, so write that down in your diary if you're interested and, um, and write to me. And uh, we've got limited spaces though, I'm afraid. Uh, we've only got um, four, four, we can only take four people at the moment. I might be able to s squeeze five if I can get hold of another wheel. <laughs> in time. I've ordered five new stools so I need a fifth wheel to go with the extra the extra stool that I've got. Anyway, um, yeah, so yeah I'm gonna be I don't know I might make some double bowls next I think they're good sellers. You know it's like two small GP bowls pushed together while they're wet when you've just thrown them and then I put a strap handle over the top. They sell very well, and always people seem to like them. I think one of the things about, you know, to, to make, make pots that are practical and that when somebody comes into the showroom or your display area and they see some pots, they immediately see a use for it. You know, if a pot is supposed to be functional and yet people come into your display area and look at your pots and they think, well, what's that? What can we use that for? If they can't, if they can't imagine or see a use for it instantaneously, then you know it, it's not so good. But if you can, if you can make make pots that are immediately people can see a use for them. And I always found that the little double bowls were 
immediately people found a use for them and saw immediately what they were used for. So uh, they, they, bought, they buy them, you know. Of course, the bowls as well I've been making. And you can take this, you know, I've spoken to before about this. Take one of these bowls, make it bigger, all right? Make it, you can make it sort of twice as big and a bit higher. And then you, you, you put a pouring lip on one side Again, people see a use for that immediately, and um, and they sell very well. I, sell, I used to sell a lot of those in Spain. I used to have a, like a wooden label that I used to lie in in the poured lip there, as it were, in the bowl. It looked really good, and pe you know they sold well. So that's another good seller. Yes, what else? Well, mugs, of course, the sellers, aren't they? Everyone needs a cup of coffee. Um, what else? Um, oh yeah, pictures, pictures. And there's lots of other little odd oddments that, that 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 you need. You know, like for example, right now downstairs in the kitchen when I'm doing the dishes, I don't have a dishwasher. But you know, when I've done the dishes, the cutlery, the knives, forks, and spoons, I desperately need a container to put them in with holes in the bottom so it, the water drains out. So. Um, what else? Pestle and mortar, another very useful uh, tool. I do a bit of cooking and I like to grind up a few seeds, you know, like cumin, coriander, um, that kind of thing, clove of garlic or whatever. So uh, pestle and mortar always comes handy in the kitchen, doesn't it? And um, what else? Well, of course, there's plates, plates of different sizes, always. And then, and, and dishes, and casseroles, flan dishes, open vegetable dishes, lidded dishes, big and small casseroles to go in the oven. They're always a big hit, aren't they? And um, anyway, let's see what else is there. Um, Do, 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 do. Well, there are lots of things. I've covered covered some of the main sort of functional functional items uh, that people that we use. I want to actually in the in my display area this time in this showroom. What I want to do is create, as it were, the feeling of a dining room or a breakfast room. And I'm going to have a table there in the middle with laid out, you know, with knives, forks, and spoons, and and the and the place servings, you know, the, the plates, casserole, mugs maybe, and then on shelves around the room, put other 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 pieces. Uh, so people, when they come in, they get a sense of well, this is not just like a sterile exhibition, but this is feels like it's actually you're walking into you know a dining room a bowl with fruit in it and um, just sort of sort of things that help people see that what some of these functional items are used for uh, not that they're not that they're at all mysterious but it helps it actually helps people to to think oh yeah that would look really nice on our table like that as well oh yeah yes could I have half a dozen of those, please? <laughs> so then I go underneath and bring out six more bowls or whatever it happens to be. And um, you can be creative, you know. I mean, my brother Johnny, he, he makes a jug. I think he calls it a fridge door jug. It's a special jug that goes in the door of, of your fridge. So it's, it's tall and quite narrow. And it just fits, you know, on the fridge door where you've got that those shelves on your fridge door. Um, there's usually like a a bar or something that runs, I and mean, you've usually got a limited space. You can't put a fat jug there, so he's made these special jugs, which he calls fridge door jugs. So, and so on and so forth. All right. Well, Simon Leach here saying, keep practicing, and. Uh, and if you're interested, uh, write to me about the workshops. 
Okay. Ciao. Didi. Didi. Didi.